Hi everyone, Ksenia Bros here. Welcome back to my channel. Today I did a very fun photo shoot. It was self-portraits at home stuck in quarantine. So the idea for the photo shoot is do like a series of self-portraits. Um, so in one shot it will be multiple poses of what you can do when you're stuck in just one room. So what I did for this shoot is I used my Canon 5D Mark IV and I connected it to my phone. While I was posing, I was able to see myself on the screen on my phone. And then I set the camera on the self-portrait timer mode for two seconds. So by the time I pressed the button on my phone and tossed the phone away, I could hold the pose for a second and then the camera would take a picture. And then I would pick up the phone and check the picture and see if I need to change anything. To connect your Canon 5D Mark IV to your phone, you need to go to the camera settings and find built-in wireless settings and you have to enable Wi-Fi. Then go to Wi-Fi function and select smartphone. Find review change settings. Make sure to pick easy connection method. And you will see this very important screen because it tells you the name of the device and the password that we're going to use. Then download an open Canon Camera Connect app on your phone. You can find easy connection guide, but I'm going to guide you through step by step what you're supposed to do. So now go to your Wi-Fi settings on your phone and find your camera in the list of the networks. And here's where you need to enter that password. It's the eight number encryption key. Click connect. While your camera is connected to your phone, you will not be able to use Wi-Fi. So you will see this warning, just click keep Wi-Fi connected. Then on your camera, you'll see this screen which says waiting to connect, open your app on your phone. And once you open the app, it will let you establish the connection. Then make sure to confirm it on your camera and it's a success. Now I can use remote live view shooting and control my camera settings. So for self-portraits, make sure your camera is on timer mode and I use two second timer. So now every time I press the button, the camera takes a picture with a two second delay. And then you can preview the picture that you just took. Okay guys, now it's time to ask you for a favor. If you give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel, more people will be able to see my videos and I hope to help as many people as I can. So go ahead and click that bell button, subscribe to my channel and give me a thumbs up. I position my camera the way it's literally sitting in my closet, <laughs> watching over so you can see as wide of an angle of the room. And then the idea here is to have one picture of me kind of like working on my computer while laying down on the bed. So I took a series of poses on the bed, making sure I'm getting the right angle. And I came up with this fun pose that I saw on someone's Instagram page. Then I took the shoes off, um, I sat on the floor, so it was like kind of meditation, yoga exercises. I'm such a control freak when it comes to pictures, so it literally took me like five minutes to position my shoes right. Then I also took another yoga pose just in case the one sitting on the floor didn't work, and I'm glad I did that. another pose, casual sitting on the floor taking a selfie. And then the last one that I did is uh, I was actually in the bathroom in the bathtub, kind of taking a bath. It was pretty hard holding that pose with my legs up, so we're talking about core exercise here. So the idea behind is working from home while taking time to do the self-care. So now we are at the editing station and I'm going to show you exactly how to edit this picture, how to blend the four pictures together. It's pretty easy if you're familiar with Photoshop, but if you're not familiar with Photoshop, I recommend you searching some basic Photoshop tutorials on YouTube. So let's dive in. We're going to start in Lightroom. So I already picked and pre-selected the pictures that I'm going to work with today. Um, the original shot that I edited, I used four pictures. Now I'm going to use different poses. They're very similar to what I did before, but it's going to be a little bit different. So first of all, I'll play with some settings, some basic settings like exposure, contrast, uh, highlights and shadows. Um, so I want to make a picture pretty light and bright, but at the same time, I don't want to lose too many details in the highlights. I don't care about the windows, but just want to make sure I'm not losing any highlights in the clothes and important things. Also this picture and all the neutral pictures, I usually try to tone down the yellows. So if you go to the HSL tab and I pick color, um, so I pick the yellow color and I tone down the saturation a little bit. 
just so it doesn't look too yellow. And sometimes I adjust the white balance and make it a little bit cooler. Okay, this looks okay to me and we're gonna do more work in Photoshop anyways. This is just the basic. And when you do the shoot, you make sure everything is consistent. The position of your camera, so it's, it has to be on a tripod. Um, the settings, they have to be on manual mode, the same settings, don't change anything. And the lighting. So for example, when you're working with natural daylight, it was somewhat consistent, but then the sun was coming in and out of the clouds, so it was changing. So some of the shots were actually off. Make sure your white balance is not on auto, but actually maybe on daylight, just so it stays consistent, so you don't have to change um, the settings later in Lightroom, uh, although it's not a big deal. And then in Lightroom, because all of the shots were shot with the same settings, same lighting scenario, I just copy the same settings to all of the pictures that I'm going to blend together later in Photoshop. So I'm going to select, so this is the main shot, I'm going to click shift and select the rest of the pictures. And then there is a magical button called sync. And you'll see the pop of the uh, sync settings. So I usually pick all of them except crop, spot removal and some uh, local corrections. So we're not going to get into this right now. Just click synchronize. So all the pictures now look consistent. All right, so now let's export all of them to Photoshop. I'm going to click export. And I already have the preset, which is called high res. So now we open them in Photoshop and a very important thing is to blend all the pictures together first before making any local adjustments. So I'm actually going to use this picture as the base, as the main shot. I'm going to add the poses from the other pictures to this one. The reason why is because I don't have any other poses on the right hand side. It's only the left hand side of the room. So I'm just going to use half of the shot basically from this picture. And the other reason why is because in this shot I'm lying on the bed and the bed sheet is moved. That's why I have to keep this picture as a main shot to keep it realistic because in the other shots the bed looks pretty neat. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna, this is gonna be our base layer. Then we're gonna go to the next shot. We're gonna create just like a freestyle selection. Uh, I'm gonna use the lasso tool. I'm just gonna go around. If you want, you can feather the edge of the selection a little bit. If you right click inside the selection, select a mask, and here you can feather it a little bit, just so it blends in a little bit better. Click OK. So now we're gonna copy this selection into the new layer. I'm gonna click Common J or Control J if you're on PC. As you can see, we have a new layer. I'm gonna right click, duplicate layer, and we're gonna pick um, the file that we're using is a base file, which is this one, 7347. So as you can see, I'm already here in the shot. It looks like this picture doesn't match the tone exactly. So we're going to deal with it in a minute. Let's just add the rest of them together. Um, so this picture, we can actually use the whole bathroom. And again, you can click select and mask. There is no exact science. Once you start putting them all together, you'll see how much of the selection you need from each picture. Again, Common J or Control J, um, duplicate layer and add it to the same file. So now pretty much we almost have our picture. So now it's time to clean up a little bit better and work with the masks. And actually, as you can see here, the picture with the bath kind of blocking the selection uh, with the yoga pose. So the easy fix is actually move the layer down. Um, now they all look in the right places. Because the picture with the bathtub blends perfectly into the main shot, uh, but now we're gonna feather the edges of the selection so it blends in so it's not so obvious. Uh, we're gonna use the mask. To create the mask, just click on this one. It creates the white mask, which means you see the entire layer. But we're gonna use the black brush. We're gonna click on black. And we're going to use it on, let's try around 50% and 38 flow. It's just exactly, it's not exact science. Um, I'm going to use a big brush. So we're going to start with a picture with the tub. It's this layer. Um, and we're going to just feather in the selection just so it blends in better. Let me hide the top layer just so we can see the edges of this selection. And it looks pretty good already. So we're going to leave it at that. I just smoothed out the edge just a little bit. And now the main trick is going to be here. So we're going to create the white mask again. 
I'm gonna use a smaller brush and because this picture looks like here it's a little lighter than the background but I'm using a medium-sized brush just sort of blending them together so that difference is not that obvious and if you accidentally brush on something you want to keep in the shot for example my shoes I want to keep them you can just turn back into the white brush and kind of like paint them back in okay and see the rug here is actually darker than the main shot because I'm sitting and I'm casting a shadow and there we go there's your picture so the only things left is to edit the skin and not just general cleanup of the shot so actually for this one I'm not gonna use this pose because the way I planned it the way I position it I will be blocking myself sitting in a yoga pose um, but just for the sake of the education let me try so this pose if there was nobody if there was nothing behind my arms um, I would use the same method. I would just create like a big selection here. So see how the way it's planned, it doesn't really blend into the shot because I'm blocking myself in yoga pose just a bit too much. And then I'm blocking, it looks like the laptop is sitting on top of my head. Um, so I don't think this pose is gonna work for this shot. But if I did use it, instead of using the rough selection, uh, with lasso tool, let me open it again. Um, instead of using the um, big selection with lasso tool, I would actually use a little bit more precise selection with the uh, quick selection tool. So when you copy it into the main shot, you can actually see through sort of. So you see what's happening between my arms and everything so for example if we copy this one it's not the entire pose but just to demonstrate you so let me hide this other layer so see how you can see um, what's behind me in between my arms here all right so we're gonna delete those layers we don't need them anymore just want to make sure everything looks good before we blend all the layers in I'm gonna copy the background layer just in case I always do that and we're gonna merge layers and now create a new layer and we're gonna clean up the picture so I'm gonna start with just some obvious things and now we will extend the room make it a little bit taller and bigger so I'm gonna use the rectangular selection tool I'm gonna to select the top part without touching any of the poses I'm going to click Common T, I'm going to hold Shift key, I'm going to extend, just make sure you don't overdo it, this is good enough, click Enter, and now we're going to crop the picture a bit because I don't want to see it this side, it's a little distracting, so right about here should be okay. I also want to fix this gap in between the curtains, so for that I'm just going to use the um, lasso tool. I'm gonna right click and use fill. Make sure it's content to wear fill. Click OK. Okay, that looks sort of okay. You can do it one more time if you're not happy with the results. And then you can use a patch tool. Now I'm gonna run the portraiture plugin just to soften the skin a bit. And we're gonna see the difference before and after i'm gonna tone it down though a little bit okay and merge all the layers again now on the new layer i'm gonna be using the dodge tool just to make the skin tone a little bit brighter it's gonna help it pop it's on mid-tones and exposures around 15 but you can move it around depending on how much effect you need to add i think this is okay Okay, and let me remove the Apple logo. There we go. And the last thing, if you want to do it, we're gonna use the liquify tool just to create better shape. Let's see the before and after. I didn't do much, just enough. Um, we're gonna blend them all together one more time just in case I always save my work once in a while um, and then let's just add 
correction layer for brightness and contrast and maybe tone down the highlights and another thing I would do is to add a cooling filter so we're gonna go to filter and I like that one but we're gonna tone it down maybe right around here let's see before and after I just don't like the yellow color cast and then the last thing that I do is to add sharpness with the high pass layer on overlay if you want to look up this method it's pretty popular you can just search it on YouTube high pass sharpening or something like that I'm just gonna tone it down a little bit so it's not too much and that's it so I'm gonna blend all the layers together let me actually see before and after the corrective layers that looks pretty good we added some contrast so we're gonna save the picture all right guys hope you enjoyed this tutorial if you like this video make sure to give me a thumbs up subscribe to my channel and hit the bell button it's gonna let youtube know that my videos are useful and fun to watch so more people can see them and i'll see you all in the next one bye